Howdy guys, One Bravo Charlie is indeed back from her extensive annual inspection. When I dropped her off with the nice folks at TAS, they agreed to film some of the process. Here's a bit showing the inspection of the magnetos and the gear. Okay hey guys, we got the mag broke down. So first we're gonna test our coil and the resistance of ohms. And the primary is 0.2 to 0.6. We got 0.6 ohms on our ohm meter. So next we're gonna test our secondary resistance, which is supposed to be between 12,000 and 16,000 ohms. And we're right at 14.5. So that's good and that checks out. We also want to check the microfarads on the capacitor, which are supposed to be 0 0.30 microfarads at the minimum. And we tested that and that is within specs, so that'll pass. But on disassembly, this wire was broken, so we're going to have to replace this lead on the capacitor block. Next, we're looking at our bearing and making sure it's not worn and it's greased properly. We're going to have to end up re-greasing this. Uh, once we put the mag back together, but that checks out okay. Next, we're looking at the rotor. David's going to measure the rotor. That falls in spec. So next, we're just going to look over the rotor to make sure there's no cracks or any teeth chipped or anything like that. And this one checks out to be good. I want to make sure this has even wear, the brush has even wear, that the spring is holding it in place properly and this part checks out just fine. The third thing we're going to look at is the block. When you look at the block, we're going to make sure there's no cracks anywhere along the block. You want to look on both sides. You want to make sure all these springs where your ignition leads go in look fine. You want to look on these contact points here and make sure there's no excessive wear. And if there is, uh, we'll replace it, but this one looks fine. There's some small wear, which we're just going to take a file and sand out. So this part also passes. Next, we'll be looking at our points. And it's hard to show on camera, but we'll take a screwdriver. David, you want to kind of pry those points open a little bit? Kind of try to look in there and make sure there's no excessive pitting. And these points, like I said, it's hard to see on camera, but there's uh, not much hitting on the points at all. We're gonna put this mag back together and then we'll show you guys how we time the mags. Next on the assembly of the mag, I'm gonna have David uh, tell you guys about the importance of lining up the teeth for the mag. So go ahead, David. All right, in order to not screw up your timing, it is very important that you follow these lines. <laughs> This one being, this gear needs to rotate counterclockwise. So we go off of this measurement, this uh, marking right here. You may not see it on camera, but it leads all the way to in between these teeth. It's been previously marked, and it also leads up to this tooth. This tooth needs to be pointing through this window. While in between these teeth is where your chamfered tooth over here is going to meet which is kind of hard to show on video but there's one uh tooth that's a little chamfered so you have to line that that tooth on your uh rotating block to that tooth on there so go the ahead easiest way to locate this chamfer tooth is just cut out right here in the rotating magnet so i'll let you get that done and we'll get back to you guys with the timing of the contact points Okay guys, we got our mag back together, so we're gonna be checking the timing. First, we wanna make sure we're on EGAP, which is a little, you can barely feel it in the mag. It feels like a little magnet starting to click. And then we wanna make sure in the window over here we were talking about earlier, that you can see the red line is in the window. Okay, so David, you wanna set this up? We'll check our timing. Yeah. 
So now that we're on zero, we want our mag, our primary contact point, to open up and begin firing at 10 degrees, plus or minus four. This one opens at just a shade under 10, so that's good. We're then going to test how far this mag opens at its max open. We're going to have to take this cam lobe and open it all the way up to these contact points. This one opens up at about 13 to 14, um, well, 0 0.013 to 0 0.014. Uh, what we're talking about there is where you can see the contact point open which is hard to get on camera here but it's a little space in between the points and we're testing to see how far that opens up we just want to stick a peeler gauge in there this one is good your spec on these um, contact points they should open up to at a 0 0.018 inches plus or minus 0 0.006 okay so next we're going to check our retard points. We're going to reinstall our needle. And then since we know it opens at 10 degrees, we're going to adjust our needle, needle to 10 degrees. Minus 10. To minus 10. Now our contact point will fire at zero. Now that that's firing at zero, the retard point is supposed to fire 30 degrees after the primary goes off. So we'll check where it hits 30. Your spec is 30 plus or minus two. So this one fires right around 29. So this is good. And it was off earlier and we already adjusted it, which you do by loosening up that screw and that screw and you'll turn it in or out so it opens the contact point at a different place. Now that we got the timing of the points all complete, we can reassemble the remaining components on the mag, and then we can put the mag over here on the engine. And later today, we'll show you guys how we time the mags on the engine itself. Uh, we got the plane jacked up in the air as you guys can see we're starting to disconnect the gear doors and main gear linkages i'm gonna quickly go over some of the things i found just uh, when i disconnected this left hand gear and kind of go over some of the things we're looking for right off the bat when we get in these gears we disconnect the outer gear door from the gear door right there and then the main gear gets disconnected over here I just one of the first couple things right off the bat I noticed is we're supposed to have a large area washer right here because this bearing can actually pull through if you don't have a large area washer and there's just a nut so we'll be fixing that obviously uh, Another thing I noticed is you can spin this right off the bat. Uh, there's a nut, kind of hard to see, back there that needs to be tightened down to uh, keep this arm in place. Other thing I noticed, which might be hard to see on camera, is you have your torque links right here and they have bushings. This is your center bolt for your torque link. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera, but this tire has a fair amount of play side to side, and that's all coming from this center bolt. This torque link does not have the correct hardware, so we're gonna redo the torque link center bolt and tighten all that up, and that should take most of that slop away. But we're going to I uh, do the inspection on this and I'll kind of go through our inspection checklist 
and some of the things we're looking for when we're inspecting these landing gears and I'll run through the process with you guys in a little bit. Okay guys, I got all the uh, landing gear disconnected. I'm kind of quickly going to run through exactly what we're looking for uh, on the inspection of the landing gear when we are got everything disconnected. So just like the, uh, I'm on the right side now, just like the other side, this rod is loose and needs that nut back there tightened up and it needs a large area washer on this gear door. Other places we're looking for is on the outer gear door. Uh, we're looking for cracks on the bracketry and hinges. We're looking through all this assembly and making sure there is no cracks anywhere or we want to make sure the bolts are facing the correct direction. We're looking through your torque tube and making sure there's no cracks around any of these points. We're looking with a mirror on all this stuff all the way around everywhere. And try to look back in there. As you can see on this torque tube it's a bit, a bit rusty so I'm going to see if uh, they want to do anything about that. Looking for cracks on this wall back here too because sometimes you're uh, trying to get the light in here. The torque tube will overextend and it'll crack right here. I The strut, we're checking for leaks around the strut. This one's got just a little bit of leakage but nothing really to worry about yet. Your brake discs, we're checking the wear on that. This one's actually uh, worn beyond limits. So we're gonna probably end up replacing that. Uh, the actual uh, brakes itself, um, they're leaking out of the pucks. So we're gonna end up resealing the pucks on these. The brake pads look fine though, but if we do end up replacing the brake disc, we'll go ahead and replace the brake pads along with it. The center bolt on this torque link needs tightened just like the other side. We got some play on this tire to look at. And then another thing here, this arm that comes through. I don't know if you guys can see all that play. You're only allowed a uh, 10 thousandths play. So we're gonna have to adjust that to get it in the right tolerance because what that deals with is a free fall which you hold from six inches back. It's gonna be hard to capture on camera, but you can see the arm when it comes down, it vibrates. And the, if there's too much play there, the switch won't lock into place. It might sit back like that and your gear will actually be unlocked. Looking up here is where, if you have an upper wing skin crack, we'll have, uh, you'll be able to push up with a uh, flat blade You'll be able to see if this is cracked. You want to look at your uplock hooks. Your uplock hooks up here. Make sure they're tight and in place and there's no cracks or excessive wear on where it locks down here. Um, what else are we looking for? These bolts right here. We'll want to get a wrench on those and make sure they're tight and not loose. This side bracket here. We want to make sure all these rivets are in place. There's no cracks. Sometimes these, someone will uh, put the, this bolt in backwards right here. And when you run the gear, it'll actually shear these rivet heads and it'll dig into this metal. So you want to be watching out for that, which this one's in the correct, uh, correct way. So there's nothing to worry about there. Also looking back here at the trunnion attach bolts and we're gonna put a Phillips on those on both sides and they're on this end wall back through here too and we want to check for tightness want to make sure your safety wire is holding these pins in place uh, we're replacing the pivot bolts they're due to get swapped out I'm trying to get a decent angle on this so we're gonna end up changing those and then we're gonna I got the gear inspection panels out. Our inspector will come back here and look uh, through these pulleys for the flaps and ailerons. Check for 
uh, any bends, wear, loose bolts, or corrosion back here in this bar area. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, deal with some of these issues, and then once we replace the brake parts and all the other issues I found, we're going to go ahead and start rigging the gear. So I'll get back to you guys when we're doing the gear rig. Hey guys, I'm doing a farther inspection on this uh, landing gear wing skin cracks, and I took a peek up in the nacelles, and you can actually see the uh, crack for the wing skin right there. So. It's cracked on both the left hand and the right hand sides. So we're gonna end up having to remove some of the landing gear components to be able to put a beef up kit in there. So we're gonna go ahead and call the customer and let him know about this so we can get started on repairing this and moving forward with the landing gear rig. At this point in the inspection, TAS set up a video conference with me to show the issues and to discuss how to proceed. Here they're showing me the side brace cracks on the main landing gear. And here they're showing me the cracks on the wing skin on the top of the wing. And here was some corrosion they found in the nose. All right, Jay. How you coming? Drilling the side brace? Yeah. Marked. Ready to go. Back drilling it with 40s. But so how do you like doing the side brace? Yeah, it's not bad, you know. Take Good. some time. You got your patch all laid up in there? Yes, I do. There it is. There's the patch over the cracked upper skin. Pretty beefy. Putting this in combination with the side brace, both sides. There it is. On the right side. Laid up in there. Corrosion treated. Epoxy prime. out of the side getting ready to put the side brace on underneath there it is all ready to go epoxy primed on the left side and Jay's getting ready to put it in <clears throat> this is pre-fit making me some progress <laughs> 